Hello everyone and welcome back to Nate the Hoof Guy. Today's video, well, it's a two-parter. First up, we're dealing with this issue right here. We've got some heel bulb separation and we know where that's gonna lead. There's gonna be a mark in that white line, a defect in that white line. The second part of this video, we're gonna follow up and see how she healed. Now you get a lot of questions saying, how do you know that the problem is right there? Well, that goes back to pressures. You see here, this hoof wall has got some curvature to it. That's putting pressures on the inside of that claw in spots we don't want it. It's leading to a defective white line. If we take a look at the bottom, you can see that wall is actually becoming part of the walking surface on the sole. This lateral claw is high as well. Both problematic and causes for this issue. Let's get started trimming this up. So in order to get this claw to balance up, I need to do a couple of things. First, I need to remove the high spots toward the middle part of this medial claw. And then I need to bring that lateral claw, the outside part near the wall of that lateral claw, down as well. That's gonna bring this foot back into balance. Now the way that that high lateral claw can help cause this problem is that as this cow walks, it's gonna force, it's gonna force her to toe out just a little bit and that's gonna cause more weight to be put on that medial claw, that inner claw. Now, because that claw has got some rotation, that's gonna put even more pressure on the white line, and that's why we've got that mark you see right up toward the top. I'll point to it here in a minute, but that's why that, that white line didn't form correctly in the beginning. That's why it's flawed. That way, when it ends up becoming out part of the walking surface, bacteria is able to get in that and cause this problem. And when I say cause this problem, I mean the subsequent inflammation of the corium, which you're about to see here in just a little bit. It's this mark right here that's given a path for that bacteria to get inside this claw. Now, if you wanted to start trimming right here with a knife, you could, but I'm gonna use my grinder. I'm gonna thin this down a little bit. It just makes that work a little bit easier. When I've got well-defined heel bulb separation, like I have here, I like to start at the top and work my way down toward that defect. And the reason I do that is it allows me to use the hook of my knife to pull that horn away from that affected area underneath as I'm making that cut. It makes it a lot less risky. You don't have to worry about um, coming in contact with that exposed area. As you can see here, I'm able to pull that away, make that cut, and I don't have to worry at all about damaging that corium. You'll see once again right here how the hook of that knife is useful in pulling this horn away. This trim is also useful in showing you where the sensitivity is when we're working on these particular types of lesions. You can see as I'm making that cut through the horn, you don't see a lot of reaction. But as I'm working here, you can see as I work, I'm trying to find that edge here. You can see when I get a little, get close to that aquarium or find that edge, you can see her twitch a little bit. That get, that's my guide to know where that sensitivity is. As I make this cut here, no sensitivity. But as I start to work in toward, you can see there's a little bit of a twitch. I'm working to try to get that knife in behind that, and then I can pull that away and try to keep her keep this as as a, a as comfortable process as possible without you know causing being able to get my job done without causing her any additional discomfort. See, as you can see, it's more the the pulling as I'm making that cut where she twitches a little bit, but I'm not getting into that as I'm working on this hard outer layer. There's no sensitivity there whatsoever.
give you a better look here exactly what we're dealing with. You can see the area of disturbance. You can see right along that edge up toward the top. I've got a little bit more to pull away there, but we're getting real close on this one. But before we do that, let's get this block applied. Now, I've been experimenting lately with a different type of wheel. What this is going to do is kind of rough the sole up of this claw a little bit. This was recommended by a farmer, so we're going to give it a whirl and see if it helps our block retention just a little bit. If I can get that up to 100%, that would be ideal. We have good block retention now, but you've seen in videos some of these fall off. I want to try to eliminate that, so we're going to give this a try. The last little thing to do here is just remove that little bit of loose horn along that edge and we'll have this wrapped up. The key to getting these to heal is to make sure that edge is nice and clean so it's not causing any abrasion to that affected area. Give you one last close up here before we move on. You can see we've got that outside wall removed from around this area now. It's going to allow our our treatment and oxygen to get in there to help heal this up, take care of those bacteria that's causing this problem right now. And then we'll move on, but stick around. We have got the two-week recheck in this video, so don't click off yet. You're gonna see that soon. Now, some of you have noticed the change in wraps recently. That's because my old brand has been discontinued. I had to switch it up, so you guys are getting orange for a while now. I think you'll make it through, though. Now, let's move ahead a couple weeks and check on her improvement. And it's pretty apparent she's healed up quite nicely. Let's get this cleaned up a little bit so we can get a better view. So a couple of things I'm doing when I'm working on a recheck. Number one, obviously I'm checking on the healing of the area in question, but I'm just gonna tidy up these edges as well around it. Not, I wouldn't necessarily need to do that at this step right here. I could wait in another couple of weeks when I pop that block off and do it then, but I've got this foot up anyway, so I'm gonna trim it up. I'm just gonna clean up these edges a little bit. It's gonna allow you to see this lesion a little bit better in this video. A lot of this type of trimming I would do when I remove that block. But like I said, look, take, do it today and get a good look at that lesion and see how it's healing. You'll notice how nice and clean and white that horn is there. That's what you want to see. That's good quality horn formation. Perfect. That's exactly what we want to find. Even though we've got good healing here, you still gotta be real careful around these areas because that horn layer is not very thick. You gotta remember at, at best right now, we would have an eighth of an inch of possible horn formation there. It's not gonna be quite that because we've had some healing time in there. Here you can get a good look at it, see what it looks like now. That's what we wanna see. We've got horn formation throughout that entire area. That's perfect. Here you can get a good side view. You can see what the relief that that block is providing. That block is the key situation here, the key factor in allowing this to heal, keeping that claw elevated. I'm going to leave that block on these next couple weeks just to allow it to get thicker. That's going to do it, guys. As always, thanks for watching, and we will see you all on the next one.